Oh, hey there. Welcome to my kitchen. Today we're going to be cooking the books. This is a DIY book cover tutorial. We're going to need some supplies, so I'm going to go through the list of what you'll need if you want to make a book cover for your novel. You'll need a computer, internet access, an account on KDP, and all the information that you're going to put on your book cover, such as the book's title, your author name, and a few other good things that we'll get into in a minute. You're also going to need some patience, a good amount of time, and last but not least, you're going to want to have some happy thoughts on hand. Actually, hold on one second. You're going to want to have a little extra patience. You're going to go through this really quickly. If you need to, you can definitely pause this video until you have everything you need, but for right now, I'm going to move this all just a little bit over so I have space. Before we get any further, I just want to make it really, really clear that this video is just for fun. I do not recommend making your own cover if you actually want to sell books. There's a reason that we have professional cover designers who know what they're doing. There are a few reasons that you might need to create a book cover temporarily or as a placeholder, and we'll get into that in just a second, but I want to make it really clear that I do not recommend using an amateur cover if you actually want to sell books. I do not recommend that. Definitely not. Unless you have Photoshop skills and a really good understanding of how covers work in the book industry, you're probably not going to be able to make a quality enough cover to sell books. I don't know who came up with that saying, uh, don't judge a book by its cover, but I think it's pretty obvious that whoever did was lying to themselves because we all know when you go to look for a book, the first thing you look at is its cover. And unfortunately, you can tell when a book has an amateur cover. So again, I don't recommend this for actually selling books in the long term, but there are some reasons, I don't know why I'm doing this a lot, but there actually are some instances where you would wanna be able to know how to design your own book cover, whether it's temporary as a placeholder or something else. So I'm gonna go over a few of those reasons really quick. Number one is if you have a professional cover, but you are not ready to do a cover reveal yet, and you wanna have pre-orders up. An example of that is right now I have the Enchanted Ground. Well, not right now because by the time you're seeing this video, I think I will have done a cover reveal. If you want to check that out, I will link the cover reveal video below. But as of filming this video, I currently have this placeholder cover available online so that readers can pre-order the book even before I have revealed a cover. This type of placeholder cover is the most simple because it does not have any artwork on it whatsoever. The second reason you might make a cover is for fun and underneath the fun category can include things like to inspire you, to share with friends, to share on your um, aesthetics on your website or on social media. Or the third reason, I don't know why I'm doing this a lot, but anyway, the third reason would be if you actually want to give the book away for free. So an example of all of those reasons is this cover right here, which I made just for fun of the Gideon chapter that I wrote, which happens to be a short story from another character's point of view in my series, The Stolen Kingdom series. At first, I made this cover just for fun and also for the sake of this video because I'm going to show you how I designed this cover cover in a minute, but I also ended up using it as a way to give away this bit of the book for free as a gift to people who were ordering signed copies during my flash website sale. If you are not actually intending to sell, sell, like you're not intending to make any money off of it, I did a video recently right here about how you can publish on a budget. So let's say that you want to publish a free book and you don't actually intend to make any money off of it, then it does not make any sense for you to pour money into it. Uh, if you're not getting any back. So in that case, yes, I would definitely make a free cover if you were selling a free book. A few more examples. Uh, again, if you want to make something just for fun, like this, for example, which was a little booklet of memes that I made for my patrons. Uh, this is the proof copy. I have a final copy somewhere else. But anyway, uh, this is something that I never intended to be a big seller. And so I made it just for fun and created the cover, that cover, and everything inside as well myself. Another example of just for fun slash something you don't intend to care about the sales are notebooks like these. Actually, these are technically planners, although I have notebooks too, but these two are for planning a novel. These were also originally made just as a gift for my patrons uh, when I was doing writerly care packages. So just for fun, again, although technically I do sell them now on my website, but this helps me learn how to do a lot of the things that we're going to show you today. Another example is if you need a proof copy and maybe you have some of the cover, like in this case, this is the front cover of The Soul and Kingdom, but 
your cover designer maybe wasn't getting back to you, for example, let's say, who knows, and you needed to have to print a proof copy so you design the back of it yourself as something really basic and simple um, just for proofreading. So the goal of a cover like this is not necessarily for beauty, but simply to have something that you can actually print out the book itself because you need a spine and a back cover to do that. This is another example of a proof copy. Let's pretend that you designed the whole cover yourself. You just really need it so that you can read the inside of the book and proofread it to make sure that it's ready for publishing. There are five steps to creating a book cover and only two if you just want to have a front cover or ebook cover. So the first one is going to be the artwork and choosing it, getting it ready to go, deciding it, etc. The second one is going to be using a company called Canva to design the front cover of the book. And if you only want to have an ebook cover, aka the front cover, then you would stop here and that's all you would have to do. But if you want to have an actual print book like a paper back then you would move on to step three which is going to be choosing the size of your book and we'll get into that step four is going to be setting up that full wrap is what it's called when it wraps around the whole cover aka not just the front but also the spine and the back cover and then number five is going to be where you actually print that book so that you can hold it in your hands i'm going to put the timestamps for each of these in the description box below so that you can skip around to the parts that you need go back and etc and etc okay let's go number one is the artwork and so the most important thing to know when you are choosing the artwork for your book is that it has to be legally allowed to use because if you're especially if you're gonna sell your book but I think in general actually there's a lot of copyright laws and you do not want to be on the wrong side of that it's really important to respect the copyright laws and people's ownership of photos so the first option you have is to use photos that are in the public domain this means photos that everyone is allowed to use you can google that and check it out or the second option is that you can actually pay to be allowed to use a photo and there are tons of websites I'll put a little list right here on the side of a couple that cover designers actually use when they are looking for images that they can use for a book cover to sell so in these places you do have to pay for images but then you will be allowed to use them for a book cover and just being real most of the images that you're going to find are going to be better on a paid site. I think it's important to note here that Pinterest is a huge no-no. A lot of us authors, including myself, have done this in the past where we grab photos from Pinterest because we love them. That's where we look for inspiration. Um, but unfortunately, there are a lot of copyright issues on Pinterest. Um, people do steal photos and put them on there and pretend that they're their own. But also if you take them, then you are essentially saying that they're your own. And of course they are not because they weren't in public domain and or you didn't pay for them. So it's really important to only use photos that you legally are allowed to use. And that leads to my favorite place to use photos online, which is Canva that I mentioned earlier. Canva is fantastic and they have a little note that they own all the rights, interests, and titles, including the copyrights to their images, except where the media is in public domain. And because of this, you can download it for use outside of Canva and use it to design things there, which is why so many authors like to use it. I have a whole video on how to use Canva for authors right here. I will link that below and you can go watch it when you're done with this video. Don't go anywhere yet. I'm watching you. <laughs> Ah, uh, anyway, moving on. However you get your photos, the second step is to use Canva. So either you're uploading your photos that you got somewhere else or you're looking for photos within Canva. And once you pick them, you're going to choose the option that is book cover because that is going to size it for a book cover. And you'll start by inputting your artwork. So you can play around with this. You can change the size of it. You can move things around. You can overlay other images onto it if you want to and have a bunch of images and you can edit each of these images by using the filters that they have already in Canva or by doing things manually yourself. Take your time on this step and try different types of artwork as well. One of my favorite things to do in Canva, if I'm not totally sure, is to 
put things side by side by clicking the little button on the bottom right that just lets you display everything you're working on so you can compare. You're gonna wanna put a title on the book, obviously, whether it's a working title or the final title, doesn't matter. You can also consider having a tagline, which is something really commonly done. I'll pop a picture of the Stolen Kingdom on the screen so you can see the tagline at the top there. And of course, you will need to have your author name, whether you decide to use a pen name or your regular name, whatever the case, you're gonna wanna have all of this this, these words, again, technical term right there, um, on your book cover. You can place them wherever you want. And if you need some ideas, definitely take a look at the books on your bookshelf for tons of creative ideas on where to place your title. And you can also size them whichever way you want. So I would definitely recommend personally having the title be the biggest, boldest, most readable part of your book cover. And then the second biggest thing being your author name. One really important thing that is true for all of the font that you're going to put on your cover is that you want it to be extremely readable above all else. And make sure that it's also readable in thumbnail size. So you can actually see what it would look like online when it shrunk down, which is typically 99.9% .9 of the time you're gonna see the book in a small version. The last thing that I would recommend as you're setting up your cover is to keep in mind something called the 80-20 rule. And so this rule simply says that you're either gonna have 80% dark, 20% light, or vice versa, 80% of it lighter, 20% of it dark. This is a stylistic tip that I picked up from a really good friend of mine years and years and years ago about how the 80-20 rule will draw someone's eye and it will be much more eye-catching and more I don't know, three-dimensional. I don't really remember what she said anymore. Uh, but you'll notice that you often can see the difference between like an amateur cover and a really quality cover because an amateur cover will be like all one shade or all really bland and boring and not having that balance of colors of light and dark. So the balance of light and dark is huge. And I personally think a lot of us do this naturally, but it can also help to be really intentional about it. You're going to want to use a lot of time. Don't be afraid to use a lot of this because this is going to make your cover better quality. The more time you spend tweaking things and making it the best it can be, the better. If you don't like technology, you might also need a heavy dose of patience. But if you're gonna do the full cover wrap that we talked about, definitely don't use up all your patience because you're gonna need heavy doses of it later on. Once you're happy with your final product, all you have to do is click download. And I personally just use the JPEG option, although if you know you're gonna have it blown out really big or you need higher quality because you're actually gonna print it, you might wanna do the PNG file, I think it is. Step three is choosing the size of your book. It's really helpful to look at what's common in your genre because you might have noticed this, I'm sure you've noticed this, if you you've ever looked at a book ever, that there are tons of different sizes for books. So take a look at your bookshelf, scope it out, actually get out a measuring tape and some of the, your favorite books in your genre that you would want your book to be the same size and measure what it is. For example, most templates start out at six by nine, uh, but when I printed out my debut novel as a six by nine, I found out that that was huge. That was an absolutely enormous book and it didn't really fit my genre. So my genre is fantasy right now and the typical size that I see most often is five by eight or some variations of that, but I choose to do five by eight. The fourth step is actually creating that full cover wrap, not just the front cover, but now you gotta create the spine and the back cover too. There are two ways to go about doing this. The first one is I would say level two or three difficulty um, and that is to use the KDP cover creator. On Kindle Direct Publishing, there is an option to use their automatic cover creator to set up your book and let them do all the heavy lifting. You do have to input a lot of information about your book beforehand. So if you wanna watch this video on how to upload your book to KDP, I will link it below. Don't go yet though, wait till the end. Okay, okay, just checking. I would not recommend using all their strange designs. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, KDP. I don't mean to diss you, I love you, but they're really funky and they probably won't sell very well or look very nice. I just think they're a little bit, anyway, let's move on. So I would recommend just doing the very basic cover where you get to design everything. And so what you would do 
after you've inputted your cover and deleted the front text is you will fill out the text on the spine and then you will also fill out the information on the back and you can fiddle around with things like the font and the sizing of it you can add things to it like your author picture if you want maybe your publishing company logo or maybe you have other books that you want to put an image of those on the back and you can get creative with this but ultimately it's not going to give you too many options after you play around to a certain point you're going to find that you still have a pretty generic cover but the awesome thing about that is that you can then move forward into printing your book on KDP. If you're just wanting to print it for yourself and you don't care what it looks like, this can be good enough. But the problem with KDP printing is that they put this ugly, ugly barcode that says not for resale across the front cover of all of their proof copies. Proof copy simply means a book that is for proofreading typically before publishing. And so the only way to get this ugly bar to go away would be to actually publish your book, which I really wouldn't recommend that. So if you don't want that ugly barcode on the cover and you're not ready to publish it, there are a couple workarounds by using a template that you can download also from KDP. I will show you right here where to find it and I will also link this below. You'll input the trim size, which again is that size that we picked in step three. So like I mentioned to you guys, I do a five by eight inch, but you can do any of these other options. The page count is extremely important. I'm gonna put 312 because that's what my last book was. And this will affect the spine size. And then next you can choose the color of the paper. Believe it or not, this also will affect the size of the spine because different papers are slightly different sizes so I believe it's cream paper that is a little bit thicker and it will, might make the spine thicker so I'm gonna choose white and that's what I personally enjoy but you can choose whatever you want and then you're gonna download the cover template I'm gonna point you to all of these steps on the right here that can guide you through this and give you a little bit more information but if you have any questions you can always Go up here to the right, top right, and click the help and talk to somebody at the KDP help desk. Do not ask me. <laughs> I will not have any answers besides what you see here because I am not a professional. I don't work for KDP. I only know the same information that you know. So if you have any questions, ask the KDP help desk. Don't ask me. I won't have answers for you. But we're going to go ahead and download that cover template. This is what it looks like. We're gonna go ahead and download the PDF, but there's also a PNG file. This is where it's gonna get a lot more technical. And again, I am not a cover designer. This is the type of stuff that a cover designer knows how to do. I just wing it and I try things until things work. So I'm just warning you right now that what I did last time to create a cover using this template was to actually make three images in Canva, one for the front cover, one for the spine, and one for the back cover and I overlaid them over these lines until it fit. So I'm just warning you now, that's what I did. And you can do that by right clicking and do add image. Let's use that same book cover that I had before and I'm gonna go ahead and put it right there. And I'm gonna show you how I basically, oops, control Z that. I basically brought it out and you wanna bring it past those dotted lines because those are the general cutting areas. You don't want any important information past the lines and. KDP won't let you, but you also want to make sure that the book cover stretches out to the edges just in case it shows. So that's the idea is to move it into place and then I would create something for the back and something for the spine and it's going to tell you the spine width right here so you can figure that out in Canva if you want to or you can create something that stretches a little bit wider and has the spine on the right side. Whatever you decide to do, you need to make sure that you read all of their directions very carefully. There's a lot of rules that go into creating a cover including on the front page here as well and so it's extremely important that you do that. I, again, I am not a cover designer. You can ask me all the questions you want and I won't know most answers because I typically will hire a cover designer to do something that is at a level this technical. But if you really wanna do it yourself, you can, again, read all of the directions, follow everything, upload it and try until it works and call the KDP help desk if you run into any roadblocks that you can't figure out. So this is the much more technical, more level 10 type of cover design of making a cover wrap in an actual template that is going to be a lot more tailored to you and a lot more legitimate looking in the end when you finally get everything settled. It's going to look a lot more realistic like a book cover, but again, it's a lot more complicated and this is 
the extent of my knowledge, just warning you right now. Another sneaky way to design the template that looks really nice is to put the PNG into Canva um, and potentially you could design a cover by placing this as the background and you would have to figure out the right dimensions for your book. This is this is a YouTube template and so it's not exact, but I could potentially, if I wanted to, I could do something like this. The cool thing about Canva is that you can actually um, have things not only overlap, but you can also fade it out to check if you are within the right range. So maybe I want to be able to see the PNG behind it. Um, I'm sure that if you had Photoshop, you could do this quite a bit better but this is my <laughs> best example of making something that would fit. And then once I can see that it fits generally, I might also want to add a line temporarily, let's say, so that I could remember where the spine line is. And then I would write the text in here, fill out the spine, and then delete these later, and also bring back the um, transparency. So what I could do is I download this. I want you guys to pretend that I put words on the back and words on the spine, and I deleted these lines. Just pretend with me. And what I'm gonna do is pull up that PDF. I'm gonna delete this picture. I'm gonna right click, add image, and I'm gonna bring in the one from Canva right here that we made, pop it into the corner right there, and make sure that we are as far out as possible, and there you go. There's a book cover right there that I made in Canva. And so the quality might not be great. You'll notice that it looks a little bit grainy, so I probably need to pick a different size in Canva that is more meant for book cover size, because I think YouTube thumbnails is pretty small. I need to pick something that's more like a poster size or whatnot, or or do custom dimensions. So you'll wanna look into, you can do a quick Google search, how many pixels is five inches by eight inches. And then again, once you have something that you're really proud of and you think it looks good, you can upload that onto KDP and see if it will let you, you know, actually print a book. If it won't, then you know that you have some work to do. You might need to read through their guidelines again. If it does let you, then you've made the template work for you and that's awesome. So again, personally, um, I might do something like this where I make the whole cover in Canva the way that we did and I would add text here and I would make it all exactly what I want it to be and I would definitely delete these lines so it would look more like a natural book cover. I hope that makes sense. Let me know by giving this video a thumbs up if any of this made sense. If you have questions, I can try to answer them, but most likely I will probably point you to the help desk, just warning you now. The template level is probably level 10 difficulty, so again, I wouldn't recommend doing super hardcore stuff unless you are a master of the internet, master of technology, or a fearless adventurer who's willing to try until you figure it out. I just kind of fiddle. Let's be real here. Let's be real. So what I'm going to do is recommend that you put in a lot of time and that if you really want to make it amazing and spend a lot of time on it, you're probably going to want to add and you know go out and get some more patience if you don't have enough. Maybe like times 10. But once you've set up the book cover in the full template and you have your wrap ready to go, that brings us to the final fifth step, which is actually uploading it to a company so that you can print it for yourself. If you decided to go with the KDP cover creator, then you are already set. All you have to do is accept the cover that they made for you. And again, they do the heavy lifting, which is awesome. But if you've decided to use this template and you wanna to upload to another site, there are a couple other places that you can upload your book. Search my name and proof copy to find this video right here on how I create those print copies of my book and actually print them. I review three different companies in this video, I review KDP, Ingram Spark, and Barnes and Noble Press. So if you want to know more about how to do this final step of printing a proof copy, I definitely recommend this video. I will link it in the description box below. And that is how you get a temporary book cover, whether you want to do pre-orders or give the book away for free or have it for fun, inspiration, showing to friends, or maybe to order a proof copy so that you can read your book and hold it in your hands any of those reasons, this can be helpful for you. If you're still watching, comment, I'm a professional cover designer uh, to make other people mad. Actually, no, that's kind of mean. Uh, don't do that. Comment something, comment a pinch of patience um, and that will be equally confusing but less maddening. <laughs>
If you want to support my channel, make sure that you like this video and subscribe below. There is a bell if you want to get notifications when my new videos come out. We just crossed 14,500 subscribers and I am really looking forward to my next goal of 100,000. Um, I know it's a level 10 difficulty, but I think we can do it. So keep on sharing my channel and my videos with your friends and spreading the word. Let's get to the next goal. Because if you're here watching this video about cover design, which is a complicated topic, then clearly you are a master of the internet and a master of technology. And so we have the proficiency level to get there. <laughs> okay, enough silliness now. I'm starving. It's time to go make some real food. I hope you have an amazing day and I'll talk to you again very soon. Bye.